The last project that I worked on was a Sherpa coat. I made it in this fabric that I purchased from Joe, no, not Joanne's, from Hobby Lobby. I really love this fabric and I was so happy that they still had some in the store. But this fabric was all over my sewing room floor after cutting it. It was everywhere. So I just took the time to come in here and vacuum and get everything off the floor. And I'm so glad that I did because now I feel like I can focus on my next project. So next, I really want to make McCall's 8454. It's a romper and I think it's so cute. I really like all the views, but I think I'm going to mix the views. So I think I want to take the bottom of view A and put it with the top of view B. So that's my plan. And I want to use this denim striped fabric that I purchased from Fabric Outlet and Crafts, I think it was. Yeah, it is. So it's a place over in Orange County in California. So I love this fabric and I think it's gonna be really cute in this romper. I decided to go ahead and make a muslin just for the bottom portion of view A. And I cut out a size six. All of the bottom pieces do have darts except for the front overlay piece. I did purchase this fabric from a thrift store just to go ahead and make the muslin. And this pattern does call for an invisible zipper. This pattern is rated as average. So for the shorts on view A, you will need nine pieces. And for the bodice of view B, you'll need 10 pieces. I was looking at the pattern piece for the pockets for the shorts of view A. And I noticed that there's a dart here at the corner on both sides of the bottom of the pocket. So what you'll do when it's time to sew it is you will fold your fabric together like this, making sure the corners and the edges are nice and even. And then you will just stitch across here and then you'll do the same thing on this side. Just fold these corners together and then stitch across. This muslin is very rough, but it gives me what I want as far as checking the length of the crotch. Here's my not so invisible zipper and I like the way it fits in the back. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be too tight or too loose. So now I can go ahead and start cutting out my fashion fabric. I got all my pattern pieces cut out last night. Well, for the shorts. I decided since there were so many pieces that I'm just gonna do one piece at a time. So I'm working on the shorts first and then I'll cut out all the pieces for the bodice. And another thing, I was going through all the pieces that I had cut out for the bodice and I had an extra piece in here that was actually for the bottom of view B. So you only need nine pieces. I think I said 10, but, or was it, let me see, I wrote it down. I think you need, yes, you only need nine pieces for the bottom and also nine pieces for the top. So a total of 18 pieces. So since there were so many, I was like, I'm just gonna work on one piece at a time. So I have all the pieces cut out for the shorts so I can go ahead and get started on those pretty soon. I'm just going through this bin right now, which is not organized, but I have my zippers and everything in here and I'm looking for an invisible zipper. And here's one right here and it's black. So that will work out just fine because the zipper is hidden. You won't be able to see it anyway. And the fabric is navy, so black and navy. They're not too far apart. I did use an invisible zipper for the muslin, but I cut it and then I realized later, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have cut it because then I could have taken this zipper out and used it for the real fashion fabric, the shorts. But that's okay because I had another one, so it worked out just fine. So I'm about to go ahead and get started on these shorts. Oh, and I have somewhere to go today, so I set a timer. I only have an hour and 20 minutes. I'm actually going to volunteer in the homeless community today. And this is my first time doing it, so I'm looking forward to it. The thing is, 
I signed up to do this about a month ago. I went into the place, I filled out all my paperwork and they told me whenever I was ready to just come in and you know, I can just get started. So like I said, it's been a month or so and I haven't been in yet. So I'm hoping when I go in today that everything is still good and I can just jump in and get started doing whatever they'll have me do. There are fold lines all around this pocket piece that has the darts in it. And you're supposed to fold your fabric on the fold lines, make a crease, and then you stitch really close to the edge. And it gives the pocket like this little boxy look so it's not a flat pocket and I did draw the pocket placement lines on the pattern pieces ahead of time so that I would know where to line up the edges so now I'm going to work on the flap here's a way that you can do the pocket so I have the pocket cut out here and I like to clip on the fold line at the top so I'll just clip on the edge here oops and then come over here and clip on this edge of the fold line and then that way I'll know where to fold down for the top of the pocket so I'm going to go ahead and fold this down I'll fold in this edge here a quarter of an inch and then I'll fold the rest of the pocket top down and then I'm going to stitch across. I like to use wash away tape to create this turn for the quarter inch and if you can't get the tape to come up which a lot of times it's kind of difficult I just take a pin and then I'll just pick up a spot and just rub the pin through the tape just to create like a line and then I can peel the tape from that line. So one side, then peel it over here from this side, and then I can just fold this edge and press it down because this is sticky tape. And then after you finger press it, you can press it with the iron. And then I'm going to fold this edge down and here's my cut edge so you can pin it if you want and then the cut edge over here and then you can pin that and then I will stitch across the bottom now this is doing it a little bit different from the way the pattern suggests I have the top edge stitched down this is the bottom of the pocket now on these three sides here I'm going to fold up five eighths of an inch which I already did and then press it down so fold up five eighths of an inch all three sides press that down then after that fold it up five eighths of an inch again and I'm going to pin it to hold it down just one side to the other side and also the bottom and then I'm going to go press this again so I'm going to press all three sides down I pressed all sides down and now you can open it up and you should have creases and now you can go ahead and stitch the corner right here so just stitch from here over 5 8 of an inch and do the same on the other side the sides are stitched and now I'm going to trim each corner And then you can turn your corners like this. So now you have your pocket and then you want to take each edge and press it down onto your fashion fabric. So let's just say 
this is your fabric where the pocket is going to go. So let's just say it goes like this and across here. So you would take this edge here, it's folded under. So take this edge, place it down on the line, and then you want to try to keep everything pressed under because you want to have your folded edge on the line. So you would press it down, stitch very close to the edge, turn, make sure the folded edge is still down, get to the corner, stitch, turn, and just stitch the pocket down. And then you just do the same thing on this side and stitch it down all the way till you get up to the top. And then when you're done, you'll have your pocket that will be looking up kind of like 3D. I got the invisible zipper put in and the D-ring on the side here. It's a little small actually because the fabric is folding in. I have the shorts finished, but I need wider D-rings after all. The pattern calls for one inch D-rings, which is what these are, but the fabric is so thick, it's not turning properly through here. So I'm just gonna have to take this out and replace it with bigger D-rings. I went to the store and I picked up some D-rings that are an inch and a half wide. So now I'm in the process of taking out this tab or this loop or whatever it's called so that I can take the D-rings off. Where should I start? Let's see. I'm going to take the D-rings off and then put the new ones on. And I was looking and I was like, are they going to be too big? We'll see. I went to Walmart and I just picked up the only ones they had. So I'm just gonna work with the one and a half inch ones and hopefully that'll be okay. This is how the one and a half inch is looking. It's definitely much better than what I had before. So I'm gonna go ahead and base this back down and then close this seam back up. This D-ring is actually too big. So when I put the strap through the D-ring, it doesn't hold it. It comes out and it's kind of floppy and it just doesn't stay and it's just really weird. See, it comes out. So it's too big. So I think the proper D-ring size would be an inch and a quarter but I'm not going to buy another d-ring so I think what I'm going to do is just take this and fold it over and put like a snap here to keep this closed so I'm just going to work with what I have I recut the tab piece and a little piece of the extension just to see if it would go through with the one inch D-ring if I used a thinner fabric. So let's pull this through and see. Okay. So this will go back through the top here. And it looks like it's going through much easier than it went through with the heavier denim fabric. So it looks like if you use the one inch D-ring for a thinner fabric, then the one inch will work just fine. But if you use a thicker fabric like I did, then you'll need a wider D-ring. For the bodice, you have darts in the back, you have darts in the front, at the waist area and also at the bust area. You have a lapel and then you have a collar and then also there will be front pockets. I have the pockets on the bodice and all of the darts. I 
I just ran into a little problem. So the back facing is supposed to attach to the front facing and they're supposed to line up because these edges are going to be sewn to each other as in this is sewn to this. This is the back facing sewn to the front facing. You can see that this is much shorter than this so they won't sew together properly. And I did cut out a six in this and a six in this and it is much shorter. So I need to recut the back piece and I'm so glad I still have some extra fabric to do that. I'm just going to add the extra length to this pattern piece and then recut. So I'm taking my curved ruler and I'm just going to line it up to the edge of piece number three. And then I'm just going to kind of curve it around, make sure it's even. I did tape this down. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I'm just gonna draw a line, draw another line right here, connect that. I'm gonna get another ruler to do that. And then I'll just separate the pieces and cut piece four out again. Piece number four was supposed to be cut upside down. So I'm just gonna turn this over. I'm gonna secure it and cut it out. As my grandmother would say, now we're cooking with gas. This lines up and this lines up. So I can go ahead and pin this and stitch it together. The collar is on. I do need to tack it down on the inside but I think I'll do that later. The bodice is now basted to the shorts. So it's basted all around and you have the facings extended here. They're sticking away from the shorts, sticking away from the shorts. So then you're gonna take the facing and pin it to the shorts at the top edge here. And then the same thing on the other side. So take the facing, fold it back. There's a dot here and there's a dot on the end here. And then you just pin it to the top and then you stitch it. Stitch all the way around. There we go. So I just finished putting the hem on the bottom of the shorts. And I just did a narrow hem. The pattern doesn't call for a narrow hem, but I wanted a narrow hem so I can retain as much length as I can. I don't want the shorts to be too short. And I put on one sleeve already. Here's how that's looking. So I need to go ahead and put on the other sleeve. I still need to tack down the facings and then I think I'm going to be done. I don't think I have anything left to do after I do those two things. So I'll show you what it looks like on, of course, once I'm all finished. notice about the romper is that it doesn't have side pockets I think that would be really cute so if you make this and you want side pockets then that's just something to keep in mind I am actually on my way to my volunteer opportunity and I should be there in about six minutes and I'll be a little early I made sure to wear layers because I'm not sure what the climate is gonna be like on the inside I actually have on this hoodie or this it's not really a hoodie it's a long collar I shared this before but I have this sweatshirt on and I love it it's a vintage pattern 
and then I have on a jacket and a hoodie under this and everything so I figure it's okay to be overdressed because I can always take things off but hopefully like I said I'll be able to get in here and get volunteering and I'll let you know how everything goes I did it I served so I am so excited I just spent three hours helping out the homeless community. They let me walk in and assist, no problems. And I was at a front desk and so individuals were coming in and they were needing resources from anything, underwear, toothpaste, toothbrushes. They were asking for like whatever they needed. And we have a resource, I'm saying we, I'm gonna just own this now. <laughs> But there were resources and then we would pull, they showed me how to pull open the drawers and get whatever I needed. So they had all type of toiletries and underwear and clothes and food and things like that. So it was very rewarding and I liked being able to help and I feel like I'm giving back. So I feel full. My heart is full. So I I can come back as often as I want so I definitely see myself coming here and helping out especially when I have the time to do it so I just wanted to report that everything was wonderful and yeah I'm so so happy let me call my friend hey hey I'm here okay we're gonna come down to the lobby Okay, okay. Okay, girl, okay. Bye-bye. So one of my friends is in LA and she called me like a couple hours ago. I had no idea she was coming in town. I haven't seen her in about 10 years. I was thinking about it as I was driving here. I was like, how long has it been? And I feel like it's been about 10 years. So I'm excited to come and see her and hang out. She called me at a perfect time because you know I travel a lot and it just so happened that I was here this weekend. So I am going to meet her and hang out and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>